Hey, what's going on everyone? So in today's video, we're going to look at what happens when you put a new GPU such as this RTX 3070 into an old PC with an old CPU. So I'm in the process of getting a new PC and I've got all of my parts except for the motherboard. So I thought, well, what am I going to do with this new GPU, the RTX 3070 sitting around doing absolutely nothing? So I thought, well, maybe I will um, put it into the old PC and see how that goes. So I thought I would bench some games on the old system, which is an i5 4690K with a GTX 1070. And I then um, bench the same games with the RTX 3070. So I thought that would be interesting because a lot of people say, you know, with PC gaming, you can just upgrade the parts whenever you want and get a performance boost. But uh, if you have an old PC with an old CPU, that tends to bottleneck some games. So we're going to see how much uh, of a bottleneck that is actually going to be. And uh, I think the results are pretty interesting. So the other thing I want to mention is that I thought we'd have a bit of fun with this. I picked games, one from each year since I bought my PC back in 2015. And so we start with The Witcher 3 and ended with Cyberpunk 2077. And I picked all open world games because I figured that would be the most CPU intensive games uh, around for each year. And I thought, well, that would also show a nice progression from the start of the CPU's life to where it is now. So with the testing, I'm hoping to answer some questions that people might have about this. So the questions I have today are, does it make sense to upgrade the GPU only? And number two, for AAA open world gaming, how often should you upgrade your GPU? And number three, should you get the RTX 3070 or should you get the RTX 3080? So this is the personal PC that I'm using at the moment. It's an i5 4690K that's overclocked to 4.3 gigahertz. It's got 16 gigabytes of DDR3 memory at uh, 1833 megahertz. It's got a gigabyte G1 GTX 1070. And also now uh, I've got a gigabyte GeForce RTX 3070. And I've got a mix of games. Uh, so the older games are sitting on a hard disk drive. And there are two games that I tested for this that are on an SSD, which is uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 and Cyberpunk 2077. Now, as I haven't done any benchmarking on my channel before, I do want to point out some caveats with the numbers I present. So firstly, the numbers are just for discussion purposes only. So I do make an effort to make sure the numbers presented are representative of what I played, but they're not meant to be precise or indicative of somebody else's system with similar hardware. I think some people might be concerned about this, but as it's for discussion purposes only, I don't really have a problem with it. Um, but just I thought I would let you guys know and also games were played for about 15 to 20 minutes with some uh, with the same missions and locations being used but obviously each benchmark can turn out differently only the first 10 minutes are shown for the frame time and CPU usage graphs as there were one or two runs where I had only 10 minutes of data sections where frame rates were boosted due to being inside menus were not included in average frame rate calculations 1080p ultra was used to allow for playability across all titles and benchmark was recorded with MSI Afterburner. All right, let's get to the results. Let's take a look at The Witcher 3. The RTX 3070 boosts the frame rate by about 50% compared to the GTX 1070, but realistically, the 3070 should double the performance of the 1070. In fact, in Tech Power Up reviews, at 1080p Ultra, the RTX 3070 does 181 FPS. So we're most likely losing 50% of the performance due to a slower CPU and RAM. The frame time here is reasonable, around 10 to 15 milliseconds, and is similar with both the GTX RTX 1070 and RTX 3070 as it's a fairly old game. The CPU usage shows a much higher CPU usage for the RTX 3070 as it can't keep up. The division boasts pretty decent numbers for both the 1070 and the 3070, though once again the 3070 is about 50% ahead, not 100% ahead. The 3070 has a worse 1% frame time, but that could be due to a gameplay issue that occurred with that run, and I don't think that's really indicative of performance in general. The frame time graph here shows the 3070 generally performs better the CPU can't really keep up with the 3070. Ghost Recon was the most interesting case. There was barely any improvement jumping up to the 3070, and this game has always been held back by the CPU even at its launch. So I'm not really sure what's happening except for the fact that if uh, the CPU is completely bottlenecked, it won't use any more of the GPU. 
Assassin's Creed Odyssey has a 41% improvement with the 3070 over the 1070. What was a pleasant surprise was that Odyssey felt noticeably smoother versus Origins. And you can see here that the 1% low frame time for the 3070 was 45 frames per second, and this should noticeably improve with a better CPU. There does seem to be an issue with the frame time and CPU usage graph after about 400 seconds for the 1070 graph, but I believe before 400 seconds is more indicative of typical gameplay. Red Dead Redemption 2 has a 65% improvement with the 3070 over the 1070. That said, Tech Power Up's review has the 3070 doing 89.8 .8 frames per second rather than the 70 frames per second shown here. Let's see if I can get that with my new PC. But what's interesting about Red Dead 2 is that GPU usage is hovering around 90 to 100% for both the 1070 and 3070. So the CPU usage is much lower. Finally, Cyberpunk 2077. The 3070 at least makes the game fairly playable, though while playing there are still a lot of frame rate dips. The GTX 1070, while it shows 39 FPS, it tends to dip to 30 or below, especially when driving around. The frame time chart shows the 1070 around 30 milliseconds or above, the highest of all of the games. The CPU usage is not at 100% all of the time, indicating there's probably some work to be done to maximize the CPU usage and hopefully improve the frame times and frame rates. In summary, open world games have become increasingly demanding over the years, as one would expect. The Witcher 3 was a very impressive looking game when it first came out, and it boasted pretty good performance on a GTX 970 when I first played on that GPU. On high ultra, I would have got about 60 frames per second, boosting to about 80 to 90 frames per second on a GTX 1070. Ubisoft's open world games have in general been fairly CPU demanding and the demands have grown from title to title, most notably Ghost Recon Wildlands, which to this day seems to be dictated more by CPU demands. Red Dead Redemption 2 is an interesting title that emphasizes GPU usage more. Cyberpunk 2077 taxes both the CPU and the GPU, the CPU in its open world scale, and the GPU with its dense post processors. Okay, let's quickly get to the questions from the start of this video. And the first question was, does it make sense to upgrade the GPU only? So if you were to upgrade the GPU from generation to generation, so if you were going to go from the 2070 to the 3070, then I would say that you can probably get away with the old CPU. You might be missing maybe like 10 or 20% of the performance, but uh, it wouldn't be, I guess, 50% of the performance if you were to wait four or five years. So in that respect, you could upgrade just the GPU, but if you have a rather old PC, and if you have an old CPU, then I would say you're missing quite a lot of that performance because as you can see from all of the charts here, you're missing around 50% of the performance if you uh, hold the GPU back uh, with an old CPU. So the second question is, for AAA gaming, how often should you upgrade your GPU? So personally speaking, I like to game at 60 FPS. I know a lot of other PC gamers do as well, but there's also the issue of frame times. And as you can see from the charts, you get noticeably worse frame times with an old CPU. And that's also compounded with the old GPU as well. So if you put a new GPU, it fixes some of those issues, but not all of it. So I think, uh, if you upgrade the entire system, that would be the better way to go uh, after about four or five years for AAA gaming anyway. For other types of gaming, um, it's not going to matter so much and you can probably get away with an older CPU and GPU. But I think uh, because these GPUs come in cycles of about every two years, you could probably skip one generation. But if after about four or five years, then it's probably time to upgrade if you want to play the latest games. So the final question is, should you get a 3070 or a 3080? And so this question is more of a 70 class or 80 class type of question, and you could have this every generation. And so honestly, it wasn't my intention to get a 3070. I wanted to get a 3080 because I've lived through the 970 and the 1070 eras. So for me, um, if you're wanting to play the uh, latest games, the AAA games, um, and the open world games, then you're probably wanting to get an 80 class GPU because when these developers develop these games, then they're looking at the 80 class GPU as something that they want to target 60 FPS for. So as you can see from a lot of the charts, uh, my frame rates were around about 50 frames per second for Ghost Recon Wildlands, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Red Dead Redemption 2, and now uh, I feel like the 70 class GPU is more of a compromise uh, GPU, whereas the 1080 or the 80 class GPU 
ha has less compromises. So um, with the 70 class GPU, you need to turn some settings down. Maybe you have to play on medium for a while. And I think that extra performance uh, that you pay $200 or $300 for at the start of the generation uh, ends up being worth it at the end of the generation because uh, that extra year that you go through that last year is a long time to go when you have to wait for a new GPU, especially when they're not in stock. So uh, that makes uh, things worse when you don't have a GPU and you can't play your games how you want them to because they're basically like a slideshow. <laughs> Okay, so uh, that's going to do it for me for this one. I hope you enjoyed it. It took me a long time to make this video because there was a lot of benchmarking and new things that I had to do. Um, so I hope it was worth the wait. But um, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you click the like button and also to subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. And I'll see you in the next one.